Hey everyone, welcome to Shelly Saves the Day. On my channel, I do YouTube Explained Simply and video editing made easy. If those sound good to you, make sure you like this video and subscribe. Would love to have you be part of the squad. In Final Cut Pro, this process is different, and if you want a video on that for all of the Final Cut Pro users out there, drop a comment on this one so I know that you also want to see that because it's done differently than we would do it in iMovie. So let's say this was the item that we're going to be blurring out. So we're gonna be working with this. You guys can see it obviously right now, but what we're gonna be doing is hopefully have a blurring effect so it's going to look like this. And now you can't see it anymore, or you can't really figure out what it is. So let's go ahead and jump into a computer and get started. So I'm actually gonna be showing you two different ways to do this. The first way, make sure your clip is highlighted and then you're gonna go over and click on the effects tab. And that is gonna be the little one over there, second to the right. So you're gonna type in sensor. This is super simple. Most people don't realize it's even here. I always like to put a break right where I'm gonna start adding the sensor effect. That's just personal preference, you don't have to do that. So obviously you see the sensor comes up. I'm gonna move it off of my face and put it over the phone in this instance. You can change the amount of pixelation. You can also change it to like more of a Gaussian blur. You can change it to a shape like a black box rectangle and you can change the amount of fade on it. And you can also just darken it if you wanted to do something like that. So one of the things that I found really helpful in here is I'm going to reduce the pixel size so it looks a little bit more pixelated. And then I'm also going to change the shape of it just a little bit by playing around with the, like the radius. I also wanna point out just how much easier it is to do keyframing inside of Final Cut Pro. So all you have to do is go to where the line is for center, and you can't see it right now, but if you hover over to the right-hand side of it, you'll see the little diamond come up, which we know is the keyframing tool. And then all you have to do is hit the forward key button to the right, so you're going frame by frame, and you can change the center of where the pixelation is. And so you can see as I start to put my phone down, I can go and follow that. And I also, again, this is just for my own personal preference. I like to put a break usually in the timeline there so I know exactly where I need to pay the most attention. So I'm gonna start then moving the pixelation blur each frame as I'm trying to keep it blurred. Now I'm just gonna play it back a couple of times and make sure that the blur is following the phone. And sometimes I like to go frame by frame and sometimes I also like to look at it full speed just so you can see how smooth is the animation and is there anything that caught my eye as I am going through it. All right, so that was the first way and that is of course the easiest way. We're gonna move into the second way. So you're gonna select your clip and then Command C to copy it and Command V to paste another copy of the exact same clip. So it doesn't really matter which one you choose, go ahead and select one. And then we are gonna go over back to the effects tab. We are going to be typing in the search bar, blur, but actually it's easier if you type in Gaussian, G-A-U-S, and it should start to autofill the one you're looking for. What we are looking for is Gaussian blur. Under the settings, you do have the option to make it extra blurry. If you want to just increase the amount of blur that's on it, then make sure that the blur is applied to the clip that is gonna go on the bottom. Select your second clip and put it on top. So you'll have the blurry one on the bottom, the crystal clear one on the top. The reason why we're doing this is because we are going to add a shape mask and then it will basically cut out what shape we're doing and it will show the blur underneath. So drag your second clip on top. We are going to make sure that it is highlighted and then we will go over to the effects tab and we are going to be typing in mask. Now it's up to you to decide what kind of mask. I like to go with a shape. If you had something irregular, you could draw a shape on, but for now I'm gonna go with shape. You're gonna see it's actually doing the opposite of what we want right now, but that's okay. Go ahead and draw the shape around the item. In this case, it's the phone. And then under the menu for the shape mask itself, I'm going to select the invert mask. So it's actually going to reverse that. So again, now you can see what's underneath, which is that Gaussian blur that's already been applied. So you're gonna see a very blurry, only in that specific shape and space. So same thing here, you can do with the keyframing. Again, I like to put a break right before I do that. Now expand the menu for the transforms, and then we're going to be able to see the shape again for like the center for positioning. And once you do that, you'll see those little diamonds start to appear again. You're going to be able to go frame by frame and just make sure that you follow that shape over 
the phone. And because we applied Gaussian blur to the entire background of the bottom layer, it doesn't really matter where the shape mask goes. Everything underneath is going to be blurry. Hope that makes sense. Once again, go ahead and place your keyframes in the frames that you think that is appropriate. One of the reasons why I like to do the Gaussian blur on the bottom layer instead of just the pixelate and blur is because I like that if I miss anything with the shape mask, everything on the bottom layer is already fuzzy. And I just think it provides a little bit more seamless of a look than the pixelated or blur following. So again, you'll see me going through changing the shape, changing the size, changing all of that to try and make it as blurry and as aesthetically pleasing as possible. You don't have to spend much time on this. I'm just showing you a second way to do this. Then watch it play back a couple of times and make sure that you're satisfied with the level of blur and the tracking. I think that looks pretty good. And now you know two different ways to do the tracking and blur inside of Final Cut Pro. So I hope this tutorial was easy enough to follow. If you didn't get it the first time, just go back, keep playing with it. That's all I can keep saying is you really have to get comfortable inside of your video editing program. And you're not gonna do that unless you actually use it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.